Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tyree Has the Audacity podcast. Of course, my name is Tyree, and I will be your host for this morning, this afternoon, and this evening. Now, to start things off, I would like to say thank you for taking the special time out of your day to come on and see what I have to say. Today, I want to discuss a common principle that I wish everybody in this world would live by. And that simple principle is practice what you preach. For some reason, I go around day to day and I hear people telling other people, you know what, you should do this. You should live your life this way. You need to incorporate this into your life. You need to incorporate this into your day. But they're not doing the same thing. See, I don't understand why we have people in the pulpit who have no problem telling you what you should do with your life. But behind closed doors, they're doing something else. See, never talk about anything that you don't take part in on your own time. Because now I'm going to think you're being a hypocrite. You want to give me everything that you feel is right. But everything that you're doing in your life is wrong. So to speak. And it's only wrong because you say that it's wrong. It's wrong because you advocate that it's wrong. But you want to do it in your life. You want to do it behind closed doors. But you want to be secret. You want to be hidden. You want to be in the darkness. You don't want to practice what you preach. And I don't understand why. Maybe it's because you get so caught up in trying to portray the image. The image. The image. I wish I would. You know, so many people in this world die trying to portray the image instead of living their truth. When you can't live your truth, you can't practice what you preach. You can't tell me how to stop using drugs when you're a drug addict and you don't find any way to get off of them. You can't preach to me about how to stop cheating when you're a preacher and you cheating and you got a couple wives. You can't tell me how to wash my sheets when you laying in dirty sheets at home. And you refuse to wash yours because it's comfortable. You can't tell me that my jo- how to work my job or how to talk to people at my job. You can't tell me to stop cursing at people when you are using a curse word every three sentences. Matter of fact, every three words is a curse word for you. But you want to tell me what I need to stop doing? You want to tell me what I need to stop doing in my life? Who are you? Who are you to tell me what I should do? And then you not follow the same principle that you're trying to place upon me. See, number one, I didn't need you to speak into my life. God has ordained people to do that. So number one, you have accepted the title that was never given to you. So you accepted the title and now you're giving me Wrong information because you don't believe the information that you stand behind. See, no matter how good your information is when you give it to somebody, it means nothing if you don't practice it either. And please do not attempt to push me in any direction that you would never go in. Because you know how you want to live, right? And I know how I want to live. But don't try to push your opinions onto me. I don't need them. I don't need your trash. I don't need your dirty work. I don't need your advice. If I needed it, I would have asked for it. But now that you're giving it to me, it makes it worse when you don't follow it. When you don't follow your own advice, live your truth and it'll make you feel better. It really would. Don't be on a podcast telling people how to live your life when you do the exact opposite. My fellow podcasters, my friends out there, the people who I inspired to create a podcast. Here's a tip. Do not put anything on your podcast that you don't believe. Don't put anything on your podcast that you wouldn't do yourself. If you want to give people tips in life, and now this part goes for everybody. This goes for preachers. This goes for teachers. This goes for um, therapists, psychologists. If you want to give people advice on how to live their life, make sure you are doing the same thing. Okay? Because it only makes sense. 
It lets people know that you know what you're talking about. See, if you can't do the same thing you're telling me to do, then I know that you don't know what you're talking about. Therefore, why would I, Tyree, have the audacity to listen to you? Because you aren't adding anything to my life. You aren't benefiting me because you can't attack the demons that you have in your life. See, a lot of people that give information that won't take it, they are often ashamed of what they're doing. If you can't do what you're doing in the dark, in the light, then you don't need to be doing it at all. See, if you know that what you're doing behind closed doors is against your beliefs or is against your ruling, then you need to pray that spirit up off of you. You need to take the necessary steps to get healed and move forward. But see, it's people like that who end up dying, lying to themselves. Don't lie to yourself. And don't lie to other people. Why? Because they're not going to lie to you. Don't fake for people. What did I say? Don't fake for people because people ain't going to fake for you. And please don't do it for me. Because you're going to find yourself at the short end of the stick every time. But this is the thing. You have to learn that everything you do needs to be with a purpose. Now I'm talking to the people who do give information that they don't follow themselves. You have to get to a point in your life where you feel that everything you do has a meaning. Everything you do has a purpose. Everything you do, you stand behind. Everything you do, you support. You can't be robbing Peter to pay Paul in life. And I'm going to show you how that connects to this. You can't be robbing people of their happiness And pay it back to yourself to glorify everything that you're doing is right. That ain't right. That ain't cool. That ain't godly. It ain't. And it makes me feel bad for these people because I know deep down that they're lost. They're lost in whatever that they're doing. It's a constant battle within their mind. They can't deal with trying to differentiate if what they're doing is right or wrong because they stand up and tell people one thing and then they do another thing they're confused you confused and they don't understand that but it's okay because a lot of people in different things but especially people in the lgbtq plus community i hope i get it right if i didn't don't throw stones at me A lot of them feel the need to hide what they're doing because they're ashamed of it. But here's one tip that I want to give to people. Whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whether you're tall, stumpy, fat, short, lengthy and all. This is one thing I want you guys to know. You have to learn to embrace yourself. You have to learn how to love yourself enough to let other people know, look, it is what it is. This is me, and you have the option if you want to accept me or not. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to do what I want to do, and I don't care how you feel about it. You have to get to that level of self-confidence. When you realize that everybody in this world is not going to agree with everything that you do, and there's always going to be that one person who wants to tell you what to do and bring down everything that you are working towards, you will realize, okay, Cool. You can believe what you want to believe, but I'm going to be over here doing what I believe in. I'm going to be over here doing what I support. I'm going to be over here doing what I love to do. And that's what your work. That's what your lifestyle. That's what your relationships. And that's what other people. If you can't defend, if you can't back up what you're doing behind closed doors to people, don't advocate the opposite just because you can't deal with your inner demons. Practice what you preach. Love yourself enough to be truthful to yourself. But I want to talk about practice what you preach in relationships because I've seen people, I've been in a relationship, and simply because that other person didn't practice what they preach, we went to a downfall. See, this is why many, this is one thing I know why relationships fail, and that is of false expectation. When you get into a relationship, everybody loves to put their best foot forward. You go out on a date. Ladies, you put on your best hair. 
you put on your best nails, you know, you get on your, your guys, you put on your freshest belt, you put on your good shoes, you get your, you get your hair cut, your beard trimmed up, that's all great. You want to present all of your good things, but rarely do people on first date present their bad things and they don't want to. Rarely do people ever want to embrace their flaws. Rarely do people ever want to present your flaws. But let me tell you something. Your flaws is what make you. All of that good stuff you present to people, at the end of the day, it all means nothing if it's overrided by your flaws. Get over it. It's a part of you. You got some good in you. You got some bad on you. Okay? I don't know if I say it in you or on you, but both of them make sense. All right? Don't let your good things diminish your bad things why because your bad things is what will help you become a better person not your good when you display your bad things in a relationship then it puts everybody on the same page it doesn't leave any room for miscommunication because when you don't do that i'm gonna tell you what happens the other person starts getting comfortable and then when things start to change they'll be like hold up wait a minute I ain't signed up for that. That ain't what was presented to me when I first met you. But all of a sudden, you want to bring this up? No, I can't deal with that. See, if you would have told people, if you would have told the person, if you would have told your spouse, if you would have told your boyfriend and girlfriend how you were at the jump, you wouldn't be experiencing problems now. But since you didn't want to be truthful, since you didn't want to give 100% of the truth, since you didn't want to give the truth and nothing but the truth, you are experiencing problems. Practice what you preach. And here's another thing. And this is small, but this is one thing that I really find a pet peeve in. Don't ask me to do anything in a relationship that when I ask you to do them, you ain't going to do it. Please don't do that, people. Ladies, don't do it. Men, don't. Don't do it. Please don't. Because this is what happens. If you ask me, because I'm never going to do this. I don't care. I could care less. But if a, if my lady friend asks me, hey, can I go through your phone? I'm going to be like, okay, cool. You could go through my phone. I ain't got nothing to hide. If it's something you want to see, you could just ask like you just did. Yeah, here you go. You can read through the messages. I don't care what you go through. Because I ain't got, I ain't trying to hide nothing. But if I turn around and it's like, well, since you're going through my phone, let me go through your phone. And you'd be like, no, you don't need to go through my phone. What you need to go through my phone for? It ain't nothing in there you need to see. I'm going to be like, hold on, hold on, flag on the play. What we're not going to do is that. If you want somebody to do something for you in a relationship, please make sure that you do nothing but the amount that you are asking for. In other words, everything that you ask of them, make sure that you're able to give it right back. In other words, practice what you preach. Don't ask people to do anything that when they ask you to do it, you are not going to do it. Please don't. Because that's a big turn off. And that goes for women and that goes for men as well. That goes for girls and that goes for boys. Because y'all know teenagers like to date. Y'all know kids like to date. They don't ever really last, and but you know they like to date. And this is a tip for everybody. Don't ask anybody to do anything that you wouldn't do on your own time. And I said that at the beginning of the podcast. Get out of the pride. Because the pride isn't going to get you anywhere in this lifetime. The more pride you have, the less room you have to grow. You can't get to what God has for you because you're too worried about the image that you want to portray to other people. You are so worried. You are so invested in lying to people that you don't want to take your truth and let the world know. See, Mary Mary wrote a song about it. They said, what you don't know is when she get home and get behind closed doors, may she hit the floor and what you can't see is she on her knees. See, that's what that song was about. She wasn't practicing what she preached, but she wanted to get up the next morning and say, it's the God in me. Ain't no God in what you're doing. You're lying to people and you're lying to yourself. And that's what I feel like some of my viewers are doing. That's what I feel like some of my listeners are doing. You are lying to yourself and lying to other people to make you feel better. You want to tell them how to live their life, but you're doing the opposite of what you're saying. And a lot of parents do this. A lot of parents do it. Not my parent, 
But a lot of parents do it. You know, I got to clear that up. Not my parents, but the people out here in the world. They'll say, do as I say and not as I do. Well, if what you were doing was so good, why, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? Why don't you do what you're telling me to do? Is it because I'm a child and you're an adult? And is it because that you feel like we're on two different levels? Well, let me tell you this. In the eyes of God, right is right and wrong is wrong. And please don't think your wrongs will be written right just because you're a parent. And just because you feel like you have authority. And that goes for people in the workplace. Just because you have authority doesn't mean that everything you're doing behind closed doors is right. Because it's not. It's wrong. You want to sit back, you want to judge people. You want to sit back and you want to tell people how to dress. You want to sit back and you want to tell people how to talk. You want to sit back and you want to tell people how to live. You want to sit back and tell people how to eat. You want to sit back and tell people how to dress. Did I already say that? I don't care. Maybe since I said it twice, it means more than the other. You want to tell people what they should do behind closed doors. You want to tell people what they should do with the person they laying up with. You want to tell people who they should be laying up with when you don't want people to do the same thing for you. Judge not, lest you be judged. Be ready to get the same thing that you're giving to other people. And if you can't accept it, don't give it at all. You have to learn how to love yourself enough to let other people love themselves. The love you have for yourself shouldn't be having you worried about what other people are doing and how they are living their life. Because that ain't you. Love yourself and let other people love themselves. Because trust and believe they're not worrying about you. They could care less what you're doing. They could care less who you screwing with. Learn to live your life and mind your business, as I said in episode three. And learn how to tell the truth, as I said in episode two. And learn how to love yourself, as I said in episode one. Because we, over here at Tyree Has the Audacity, don't care about the opinions of negligent people. You can't try to push your belief on somebody else when you don't believe what you advocate in. All for an image. All because you want to look good. All because you want to rob people of their happiness to make you feel good. Well, let me explain something to you. Because there's people out there who do this on a, on a smaller spectrum. See, people, stop lying on your resumes. Please stop lying on your resumes. Stop saying that you have good time management skills on your skill sheet when you don't show up to work on time. Stop saying that you are a team player. When you know good and well in the workplace, you are not going to take other people's work if they need help. Okay? Stop lying on your resumes. Stop lying. It don't do you no good. You get fired. Then you'll be without a job again. Stop lying. And just be honest with yourself. People will only know what you tell them. Well, in certain situations. Unless they want to go back and do their own research. But people will only know what you tell them. And don't think that what people don't know won't hurt them. Now, that's the most weirdest principle or the weirdest thing I have ever heard in my life. What people don't know won't hurt them. Well, let me explain something to you. If they're going to eventually find out, do you think they're going to be hurt more at the fact that you didn't tell them or mad at the thing that actually happened? Because if you ask me that question, I would be more mad at you withholding the information that I need. Allow me the opportunity to find out my own emotions on certain situations. You don't know how people are going to act. You don't know how people are going to react. Okay? So give them that freedom. Give them the option to do what they want to do and react how they want to react. But back on the topic, practice what you preach. You can't tell people that what they're doing is wrong or the way that they're living their life is wrong when you don't know what they've been through. You don't know how far they have came from where they started and you, mm, you really don't know where they're going. You ain't God. So how dare you condemn somebody else's life or the way that they live or their lifestyle? How dare you? advocate love 
How dare you advocate self-expression? How dare you advocate living a happy life when you judging other people because of their lifestyle? Matter of fact, let me go a little deeper and let me throw a shot. How dare you be a straight person, but you want to antagonize a gay person for being gay? That ain't your decision. That's like everybody in a room wearing black shoes and I walk up in there with white shoes and everybody want to shun me out because I'm different from everybody else. It ain't your decision how people live their life. See, if you loved yourself, you wouldn't be offended by what they're doing. If you loved yourself or if you were so confident in what you were doing, if you were wrapped up in your life, if you was booked and busy like you should be, you wouldn't be worrying about them. But for some reason, their lifestyle means more important to you than what you got going on. You feel that it is necessary to make such a small, sneaky, disrespectful comment that has nothing to do with you. Why are you making them relevant in your life? Because trust and believe they are not worried about you. But that doesn't just go for that. That goes for people who look down on other people. For, for a fact, you can't be making six figures looking down at people who don't make as much as you and you making them feel worse. How dare you? How dare you be a business owner? Or how dare you... Not give other people the opportunity that people, when you were in the same position, gave you opportunities. You ain't that big. Don't forget the Lord says everything that has been given to you, I can take it away from you. Don't get big headed. Always remember to be humble. Always remember to give gratitude. Always remember to be thankful and grateful. Because everything that you got, you ain't. you probably won't have it tomorrow. You might, but if the Lord didn't want you to have it tomorrow, everything you had will crash. But you need to be thankful. I can go on and on about this topic, but I'm going to leave you with one thing. If what you are doing in the dark can't be presented into the light, if you walk around judging other people from what they're doing, if you simply can't practice what you preach, then take a seat and let somebody else do the preaching. All right, it is about that time to head over to the Hope Letter. Welcome to the Hope Letter. For people who don't know, Hope stands for Help Open People's Eyes. This is an opportunity for my listeners to send in an anonymous email to thtaudacity at gmail.com and I will give my upfront and honest opinion and advice to your situation or your issue. So let's go ahead and dive into this letter. There is a girl who I've been talking to lately who I really get along with. My dad has not stated that he has any problems with her, but my mom has given the following two reasons as to why I shouldn't date her. One, the girl has tattoos. My mom seems to bring the reason up the most. She thinks it is a sign of immaturity and worldliness. Yesterday, I walked in on her venting and she said, imagine your baby being held by a mother with tattoos. I personally would never get a tattoo myself and I'm not a huge fan of them, but I think my mom's been judgmental about someone who did choose to get some. Two, the girl unfortunately is stuck in a leased apartment with her ex-boyfriend. This is a legitimate concern and I've been putting a lot of thought lately into whether or not I want to be in a relationship with someone who is in this situation. Her ex-boyfriend also hates my guts and won't allow me into the apartment. 
We also have an we also live an hour apart. It is a very messy situation, I will admit, and both the girl and I know that. I've been trying to handle this situation myself and make the right decision, but my mom butts in with her comments and opinions, and that only frustrates me even more when I'm having to deal with a messy situation. So firstly, what do you think I should do in terms of this messy situation? Which again, I think is a legitimate concern. Listen, bruh. Let me explain something to you. I have a couple issues with this. Pro I have a couple issues with this problem. I'm not even worried about your mama. I ain't worried about your daddy. Okay. Your parents aren't going to like everybody that you're with. Okay. If your mom don't like the fact that she got tattoos, she don't like the fact that she got tattoos. That's not the problem. I want to talk about you. See, your parents aren't the problem. You are the problem. You said I want to talk about number two. You said the girl, unfortunately, is stuck in the lease department with her ex-boyfriend. Why would you ever get into a relationship with someone who is still living with their ex? You don't know what they doing. You don't know if who they doing. You don't know if they screwing each other. You don't know what possibly is going on in this household. So, therefore, they're working together. They're paying this rent together. They're paying bills together. What else are they doing together? That didn't ever cross your mind. Then you want to talk about this is a legitimate concern. You darn skippy. This is a legitimate concern. And I've been putting a lot of thought into it lately. You should have put a lot of thought into it before you got with the girl. You didn't just figure out she was living with her boyfriend, with her ex-boyfriend yesterday. You didn't figure it out today. You didn't figure it out a week ago. You figured it out when she when you got with her. And then you want to say he don't like you. Who would like you? What ex-boyfriend of hers do you know would like you? He probably want to get back with her. That's why they ain't moved out. So you got to think. Sir, first, I know you're 21, but I'm going to need you to grow up. I'm going to need you to start thinking. Use your, your critical thinking skills. You're in college. Use your, your critical thinking skills. Her ex-boyfriend also hates my guts and won't allow me into the apartment. Would you allow yourself into the apartment? We also live an hour and a part away. How do you get? <laughs> How do you get there? <laughs> Is she ever coming to see you? Or are you always going to see her? Please get your priorities together. Get yourself together because you aren't in the right headspace. It is a very messy situation, and I will admit, and the, both the girl and I know that. Uh, yeah, both of y'all know that because she living with her ex-boyfriend. She ain't stupid. You stupid. She ain't the one that's stupid. You the one stupid. You crazy. You're in a relationship with someone living with their ex-lover in the same apartment and trust and believe they probably sleeping in the same bed sleeping on the same dirty sheets sleeping under the same comforter you don't think they doing anything when you're not around because you're never around because he won't let you in the house therefore they trying to hide something and then your mom, but you worried about your mom saying that she don't like the fact that the girl got on tattoos. Don't nobody care about your mother's opinion. Don't nobody care about the fact she got tattoos. You said your dad don't have any problems with her. Cool. But if I was your parent, I would have a deeper pro I would have a bigger problem with you than I got a problem with her. You worried that at the fact that your mom said that she don't like tattoos and you feel like your mom is butting in to the situation. Your mom is trying to help you. <laughs> she not helping you the right way, but she trying to help you evacuate the premises. She needs you to get out the situation entirely. Please get your stuff together. Then you want to get to the end of the letter and say what you think I should do in terms of this messy situation. Leave. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just get the heck out of Dodge. Please get your stuff and go find somebody else. You 21, she 21, you're both young. It ain't like it's the end of the world and you ain't ever going to find anybody else. Okay? Talk about your mom hate the fact that she got tattoos. And then you want, and then you got the nerve to say, I personally would never get a tattoo myself. I'm not a huge fan of them. You sound like your mama. 
But you wanna worry about what other people doing. You wanna worry about you worried about what she doing. You need to figure out what you doing with your life. You don't need to be in a relationship. <laughs> you don't need to be in a relationship at all. Because like I said, your priorities are mixed up. You worried about one thing when you need to be worried about another thing. You need to be worrying about her commitment within a relationship. And that's where people fall short nowadays. We have gotten away from commitment. We have gotten away from the point of you aren't doing this anymore because of the new situation that you are trying to get in. See, that is what we need to get back into. We need to get back into, look, it's either you're going to fix this situation, you're going to rectify the issue, or I'm gone. We need to get back to that. We need to get back to the level where I'm not accepting anything less than what I deserve. But you know what, guy? Maybe you do deserve somebody who sleep around on you. See, I don't know. See, I feel like you're leaving bits and pieces out of this letter. I feel like you're leaving some stuff out. You're only using this to benefit you. But I feel like that there is something you're not telling me. But it's okay. Because I'm not going to make something up. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. But all what I'm going to tell you is what I see in this letter. And what I see in this letter is that you feel like you need her. If you didn't feel like you needed her, you would be gone. And you would, you would see the BS that's being fed to you while it's happening. But you can't. I don't know why you need her. I don't know what you're looking for. I don't know what you're searching for. But you, won't, you're, you are not going to be able to find it in her. She is not your answer. She is not your answer. And you need to go somewhere else. You need to go somewhere else. You need to find somebody else. You need to find somebody with a purpose. You need to find somebody with a divine meaning. You need to find somebody who's going to give you the same amount of time that you are trying to give them. You need to find somebody who's going to love you just as much as you are going to love them. You need to find somebody who has a plan. You need to find somebody who has enough things to come with. You need to find people who can bring things to a relationship. You need to find things with you need to find people with things they can offer to you just as much as you can offer to them. And if they are not on the same level of commitment, if they are not on the same level of honesty, if they are not on the same level of readiness as you are, then you need to reevaluate the person and get with somebody who is. I would like to say thank you to everybody who has tuned in to today's episode of Tyree Has the Audacity Podcast. I love you, and I pray that you learn to love yourself more than you did yesterday. Be blessed.